Hello, my name is Diana Harvey, and I'm here to present to you the experts' insights for boosting productivity and efficiency using your Business Central product. And we're just going to go to the next screen here. So just want to make sure that we all are on the same page about what we're going to be covering. So we're going to do a little you know, session focusing on maximizing the potential out of your Microsoft Business Dynamics product. We plan to um, share some tips and tricks to make it so that it's a little bit more efficient for you, enhance the productivity, and also be able to, you know, know a little bit more about extensions and some of the overall features in the system. Now, some of these are the best practices. Some are just shortcuts, um, ability to just use the system more to what you might need to do. So the areas that I'm going to cover have some of them have been covered in previous releases, previous webinars, but I think they're very important to discuss them in the system. So some of them are going to be customizing the profiles, searching for data, what queues can do for you, the teams in OneDrive in Microsoft, emailing out of the system as a reminder of options you have besides just the direct send and print, quickly doing payments to a vendor, receiving payments from a customer, more and more clients are doing receivables that are done as an ACH file. So that's important. Workflows, um, some tips with the workflows that it's gonna make it more efficient and a little bit less stressful for you. How you can adjust line descriptions, edit your descriptions, bring back up posted journals, search for some posted lines, reminder that the 1096 form is out there and options you have for your payment reconciliation journal. On the last release, which we would have done a webinar in April, hopefully you attended that, we are going to review and analyze. Uh, ship and receive restrictions have been added to the release that wasn't really documented, so we're going to talk about that also. The ability for a drag and drop, enhancements for inner company, some keyboard flexibility, setting up master data, and statistical reporting. Then we're going to talk about some options with extension ma um, marketplace, but we're going to go ahead and go into the system now. So if I go ahead and bring up my in demo environment here. So the first thing that I want to talk about, and I talk about this quite a bit, and I think it's really important, is just dealing with the, how it looks on the screen. So Microsoft, as you know, provides profiles. When you are first accessing into the system, everyone is assigned to a profile. So I have one that I'm in here now as the business manager. I can go ahead and select to bring up my profile. And once again, you obviously have to have permission to do this, all right? So I can come in here, I can select my profile, and I can say to customize the pages. And if I wanted to do that, I really should, reality is copy the pages first. All right, so if I come back over here, and I'm gonna just come back over this way, I can select to copy the profile, and that way I, I'm not causing a problem with the native field that's out there. So I could do demo business manager, and I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. So that'll also bring up a separate screen that I can now go ahead and customize the pages again. And I think this is really important whether you do it as a company-wide or an individual user does it. It just allows you to remove areas that you don't need. So if I don't need this, then I can go ahead and hide it. If maybe you're not dealing with you know, sales orders, so I can come down here and I can remove this and I can remove the sales quotes. And maybe some clients are not dealing with inner company. So you could come in here and remove this area. All right, you're not interested in the average collection time frame or the vendor invoices, so you can remove those. I can also come up here under maybe sales here, do a drop down, And once again, I can come in here and just start hiding or removing. All right, so it just allows you to make changes if I wanted to and it'll hide that information such as it's done over here for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and say done. And it'll ask me to go ahead and um, save it in again if I wanted to bring it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and close it back down. I do have it in 
an option here, I did it in another company, is I created one that I call the simplified option. And this one is very simplified. It only has journals in the chart of accounts. Under cash management, I am spending the money and I'm taking the money in and I'm doing a bank reconciliation. So a very simple process, customer sales. I'm not dealing with any inventory, no finance charges, no item charges. It's a very simple screen. You don't technically even scroll up or down on it. It just has very little information. I can assign this to a user and I can prevent the user from changing that information. So profiles, I think, are very important to make sure you customize them so the user sees what they want to see. Based on their permission, they still have the option to search and it's going to bring up that information for them. So the next era that I wanted to bring up, I'm going to go ahead and shut this one down too. go back over here to my demo system is searching for data. So this is one that's kind of hidden in there that some people might not be aware um, that it's even been added to the system. So it's right here in the um, search actions options here. So I'm going to go ahead and select search data. So this is actually searching for information over the whole company. So I only need to type in a minimum of three letters. So I'm going to start with DIA. So it brings it up here and you'll see where it's in a description fields. And that's what the system's saying here. It's in a general ledger entry and it's appearing in some of the description fields. It also brings up and shows me any that are in a contact and a vendor. So you're right here, it's in media and then posted purchase lines. It also tells me if there's more, then I can go ahead and search for those. It brings all of them up. And then I could go in and take a look at them if I wanted to. So it just allows me to see that information. So if I come up here and I click on it, it's going to go ahead and open up that record and take me directly to that column or that field of information. So the search, when someone asks, is there a way to look at something throughout the whole system? I would start here with the search. Find entries has always been there. It used to be called navigate, but you have to know a little more information, such as the document number or posting date and the ability to search it, all right? This just allows you search anywhere in the system for a little bit of a letter. So if you put a description in something and you wanna go back and find it, then you can do that. The next area that I think is just kind of important is dealing with the cues that are here to pay attention as to why the system is providing a queue or a tile of information that allows you direct access to it. So some of them, which I think are very handy is the fact that I can drill into this, just click on it, and I can see what information is an overdue. I can sort on my due date and I can see all of that information without having to go run a report and look up that information. If I come back here under activities where it has setup queues, I can also determine my coloring down there. So I have my overdue sales invoices amount and my overdue purchase invoice amounts. And so I can set these thresholds and have it where it looks at that for me and I'm aware of what's going on. Coming down here, if I was doing intercompany, then I do you know, wanna pay attention to that incoming box there, the pending box. As I scroll down, you'll see that some, you can change the color of the box itself and it'll show it in a red or different coloring. If I scroll back up here, that's why these are gray and that's a light blue. Also that's important is this email status because this boxes of information is gonna tell you, do you have any that are failed? So my color coding for failed emails are, it's green if it's zero, one or above is a red. I wanna know right away if there's a problem with that. I have my draft ones, and then also what's been sent in the last few days, it brings up that information and shows me. The other one I think is important is the pending approvals. If you're doing approvals in the system, you kind of want to know, do you still have some that are sitting out there or any that you're waiting to approve? So it's important, I think, if you clean up the ones that you don't need and then really pay attention to the ones that are there and then color code it, it's going to save you a little bit of time. The next area that I wanted to talk about just a little bit is related to, once again, the Office 365 products. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up Teams. And so this is the Teams related to my user here. So Contoso is one of my companies. 
And so this is actually a team inbox that's related to the users that we were in, are in that system. And what I can do is I can add different pages to my teams. So you might have a user in the system that you know is putting in sales invoices or paying attention to what's going on with the sales invoice and has that information. So it shows it, it's very easy to access it, add some notes. I can also come over here to financial reports and I can run a financial report from here. So once again, if you have somebody that deals with more than, you know, just kind of a directed area in the system, then this just allows them to not have to log into the system. They are technically logged in through Teams so that it is consuming their licensed user, but they don't have to open up the system to do something in there. There's also customers, and there's a few other ones that you can add. So you can select to add a tab and go into the Business Central and it'll open up and show you the options that you have to add additional pieces. Not everything's there. There's some um, vendor might be there, bank account information, looking at the chart of accounts, dealing with some workflows, all right? Um, statistical accounts, the user setup. So maybe you have somebody that's in charge of adjusting the purchase or the posting date range. So there are some pieces that are in there and it can be based on company. So I think the Teams is a really cool little feature that just allows some people not to always have to go over and open up the system. The other one is just related to OneDrive. Um, the product, if I come over here to my settings, it will talk about that it is moving toward the OneDrive and where is the OneDrive, all right? My user is mod admin, so my files are on my OneDrive. So I have down here a report that is scheduled to run on a weekly basis. So if I come in here and I wanna open up this report, I can also open it up. Whoops, I meant to open it up here. I can open it in OneDrive. I can also share it. So if I open to OneDrive, it's copying it to OneDrive and then it'll put it out there. So it's always out there on my OneDrive and then I can also share it if I wanted to. And I also have a problem, obviously, with security, I need to do a pop-up, but it would save it out there. And then I have access to it. If I go to my OneDrive, I would see that it's there. So there's my files would be placed out here. And I would have my option that I could copy the link, share it out to anyone that I want. So all the information is going out to the OneDrive file. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. So Teams, OneDrive. Um, I do know that they're going to be um, looking at more options within the Outlook. Op, um, that is gonna be improved upon in the next one or two years. That is an area that was discussed at a recent conference that we went to with Microsoft. The next one I wanna talk about real quickly is just the invoicing side of it. And just to give it, different perspective than invoicing off of a posted sales invoice or invoicing a purchase order or invoicing from uh, customer statements, things like that. So I'm gonna go down here to Elkhorn Airport and maybe I wanna send Ryan an email on something, all right? So I have Ryan's email address down here in the customer card. Under process, I have mine penned so it stays open. I can go ahead and select send an email. So if I come in here, it's going to open up and bring in for Ryan here. I can add a subject. And then I could type in a message if I wanted to. I can also create Word templates for this. So if I come over here and I have one that's out there is called a customer event. And I'm just gonna say finish. I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. So what the system does, is it's gonna merge in the information related to Ryan, and it talks about them as a customer, and then an opportunity to give them a 25% discount, and then I can go ahead and send this out if I wanted to. So I can go ahead and select send, and then it'll record that I have sent that um, email out. So if I wanna see my sent emails, I can go here under history, and sent emails is there, and it brings up the documents, and it shows me that if I've sent something out or not, when I sent it out, if I need to edit it and send it again, or if I need to resend it, I can do that also. So I'm gonna back up here for a moment. So while we're in here, I'm just gonna show another feature that's related to the newer part of the system. 
is the ability to move something to a different spot on your bar. So if I come over here, I'm just going to select personalize, go down to related, history, and the sent emails. So what I want to do is I actually want to move that so I have a little bit more direct access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and say done here. So now my sent emails are right up here. I don't have to search down for them. So that is really important to know that that is there and that you can change that on uh, many places. Or you can pen something like I have it pinned here. Alrighty, so the next area that we're going to talk about is taking, um, doing quick payments to a vendor. So I can select, um, open my purchase, overdue purchase invoices here if I wanted to. I can also go to just straight old vendor ledger entry. So I'm going to go ahead and just select that one. And I preset some filters here. So I have everything that has a balance that's ACH or balance that might be a check option. And these are based on what's in my payment methods here. So these ones right here that are blank are ones that don't that have already been paid. So I'm going to go ahead and just select balance ACH. And these are ones that have a payment method code equal to the bank. So and maybe your payment method code might be equal to ACH. So it just brings up all of these transactions. I can then go ahead, I could sort it by vendor. So I just have the information and I know what I might want to be paying. So I'm going to go ahead, minor sorted by vendor here. And I'm good with all of this. And I might just want to go ahead and make a payment for it. So I'm going to go up here to process and I'm going to say create payment. And this is just going to bring up another screen that will allow me to send out a payment or create the payment journal batch. So it brings it up and then it's going to give me the starting date, the date, what kind of, where is my bank account and what type of transaction do I want to do? So I say electronic payment and then I can go ahead and select OK. It's going to take those transactions out and it's going to create a batch. So I only had these two vendors technically in that overdue amount or that I was paying. And then I can now go ahead and process that if I needed to. If I come back over here, I can then take and select it by check if I wanted to. It'll filter by that. I can once again hit the process, create the payment, and then all I need to do is change this over here and do a computer check and say OK. And then it would go ahead and push that over and put it into a payment journal also. So it just gives you different options for paying quickly without having to do a suggest vendor payment. Some people will pay everything that's out there. So it's just a way to do that information. The next one is receiving customer payments. So this is related back to if you get notification from your bank that your customer has paid you using an ACH file. So I can come in here to receive customer payments and I have my list of everything that's owed to me by the customer. I can come over here and I can put it into customer order. So I have that. Then I can review the email from the bank that says, Maybe this customer paid everything that needed to be paid. So I can go ahead and select that. Then it gives me the total of the amount that's been paid, unposted balance. So does that match? And then I can go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, um, it's a different amount received. But I'm going to go ahead and select posting. Do I want to post it? Do I want to post it as a lump sum? So I can go ahead and select to post as a lump sum because it's all the same customer. If I had different customers in there, then it would go ahead and not allow me to post it as the lump sum because I have different customer information in there. So I want to be able to select that and then I would just say post payment. It would post it to the bank and it would clear off that customer balance. Oh, this one I have a mixture of currency. That's why it's getting different amounts in there. So let me come down here and I'll just go ahead and select a couple of these. And then I can do post and I can say post the payment. And that's why my amount was a little bit different because it was in a different currency. Now it's cleared those off and it's posted those payments. So once again, a nice way to do that information, it puts it into the bank and offsets to the customer so I can do my bank reconciliation for it. 
The next one is just dealing with the workflows. And this is a great option. Um, so right, workflows. When you're dealing with a workflow, you can go in and put in a purchase order workflow. You can put in a purchase invoice approval workflow. And this will require that, you know, as you're processing it, it is sent out for approval. Then you're waiting for it to come back for approval so you can then go in and post it. There's actually a template out there for purchase invoice workflow. So this doesn't say purchase invoice approval workflow. What this is stating is that when your the status of the document is changed to released, then the system will automatically post it in the background. So if you're sending it off for approval, that person approves it, comes back to you, and all you have to do is just go in and post it. You can actually have it when that person approves it that they're actually doing the posting behind the scenes. So that way you don't have to remember to go back in and finish the process. So this is really a nice feature. This that also continues on and states that it will allow it to go to a payment journal for payment and then notify the user that it has taken place. You technically can take away the portion of it going to the payment journal if you don't want to pay it at the same time. So you can actually make it so that it will post it and send a notification to the user. So I think this is a very efficient tip to save somebody a lot of time. Okay. Um, the next one that I wanted to just talk about really, really quickly, and I'm just going to go into the purchase and payables setup, is the ability to copy your line description to the general ledger entry. So this is very important normally when doing purchase invoices or purchase orders, is that the user will type in a description or some reference in the description field of the line of the purchase invoice. And in the past, it would not post to the GL. The GL account number used or the item reference or something else would post. So this, if you select this on, then it will go ahead and allow you to have that value post to the GL. Then once again, you can search on it using search data. So this, this is a very nice feature and I think it's important to realize it's there. Uh, the next one is the ability to edit your description fields. So if I come into here and I wanna edit a reference down here, I can go and select that. It's gonna come back open. And then I can just go ahead and reference into the field. So if I wanna put this webinar example, and then it's there. And like I said, I can go ahead and search on it. You cannot edit most ledger entry values or any fields in it, but something that is in a sense not gonna matter if it balances or not, then you can go ahead and edit that. Another option that I think is really important to understand that's out there, you might not be aware of it if you've recently done an upgrade or something, is when you're going in and doing the general ledger, there's an option here that says copy to posted journal lines. So this is similar to allowing the system to have a posted journal or posted documents like you would if you were doing um, posted purchase invoices or posted sales invoices. So there's an option over here called posted general journals. So all of your journal entries that are done post to this. So it's like a big filing cabinet of all your journal entries. And what you can do here is you can select some of the lines if you needed to, to put them back to a general journal. So if I come in here and I can say select copy lines, do I wanna make a different posting date? So technically I could put in for a different date and do I wanna replace the document number and do I wanna reverse the sign? So if I kind of take a look at these and I say, okay, then it's gonna ask me, do I wanna open up my journal? And then there it is in there, in there with a reverse sign on a different date with the same document number. I can come back here, I can actually, and I don't have to have it be ones that are all in the same order. I can randomly select the lines and they'll do that also. I can also have it copy the whole register. So it'll take everything here and move it there and I can reverse the signs and replace the posting date if I wanted to. So this is a very nice feature. I can also, if I have, our document associated to it, then I can see that document over here. Or if I do my find entries, I can find my document. So this is a newer option that maybe, like I said, if you did an upgrade, you wouldn't know that that information is there. The next one that I wanted to hit on really quickly is 
that you have the ability to search your posted lines. So if I come in here and I go posted sales invoice, you have the ability to search the lines. So if I select here, then I can see all my information. If I bring forward my filtering, I could filter the list and say, I want to see everything that was a GL account number. And I could also, you know, there's only two. I could tell it by customer. I can look at amounts. So it just allows me to get a little bit better way to filter the data out, where in the past I would have had to do a configuration package. The next one is just a reminder, once again, that the system does a 1099 form. So you have that ability there. Um, the last one here that I wanted to talk about from previous releases is just a payment reconciliation journal. And this one will allow you to import in credit card statements. So I'm gonna go ahead and select import and I'm gonna go ahead and select my visa. This is a new feature for the drag and drop. It will allow you to um, look for an option. I'm sorry about that. Or it will allow you to, sorry, I'm moving my screen here so I can get a better drop. I can just drag a file in or I could still go browse for it. So it's gonna go ahead, this is a credit card statement. So I have done some setup on my bank account that'll allow it to map to a credit card file that I get. This actually will go down six or so lines. It has a bunch of columns in it, but I'm only paying attention to four. And then it's mapped some of the information. Then if I come along here, I have some that are a difference. So it means I haven't matched to them. So I need to take in care of PayPal, Dunkin' Donuts, and Chick-fil-A. So if I come over here and I say map the text and I'm just gonna do chick and I'm gonna do it as entertainment and I'm gonna put it over here and the same with the Duncan. And you'll notice that I don't have to type in all of the values and then I'm just gonna do a close. It's gonna say, do you want me to update and map it? And I'm going to say yes, and then it's going to go do a refresh and look at that again. And now the only ones I have left are PayPal. So then I can go in and do the PayPal ones. It's going to save it for next time, and then I'm good to reconcile this um, um, payment out. Now, it doesn't do the dimensional value. So if you need it to be based on dimensions, those will need to be added to the line. This can also be used to do a bank reconciliation. So if I actually tell it to import to do to a bank account. And this time I'll go ahead and just browse over to a bank account. And let me bring in my bank information. And this tells me that 29 out of 30 lines were applied. So I didn't even have to pull in any of the bank information there and it'll go ahead and have that as a value. Go ahead and say okay. Then I come down here, I can see that I have a difference. This is related to a service charge. So once again, I could map it if I wanted to, and then it would automatically display it. When I go to post it, it will allow me to post and reconcile. So when I do the reconciliation, it will bring up and ask me what my statement ending balance is, my statement date. So it's a quick, easy way, once again, also to do a bank reconciliation. Okay, so that's kind of covers all the stuff from the previous one. We're gonna take just a few minutes and cover the things from the newer one. So one of them is the ability to analyze. So anywhere you see an analyze, then you can come and bring it in and it will allow you to look at the data, kind of sub it up and look at some of the information. So I have a few that are done here and I also have the ability to create a new one. So if I go ahead and select this one for revenue, I'm gonna bring forward some of these. I have the GL account number is filtered. So everything that's starting with a four is a GL. If I come over here to columns. I'm doing uh, my rows are grouped by the GL account number and then the department. I could also add additional information if I wanted to. So maybe I wanted to know it by the source number, which is the customer. So I could bring that in here and it would bring in and show it to me by my customer number. And then within that, I can see which department it's related to. And most of my revenue ones are probably sales. The same over here, if I come, so I have my two dimensional values are department and technology. 
So it just allows me to take a look at that information in the GL ledger entries that I'm looking at. And I once again could set some filters on it. So you have the ability, if I come over here, it just brings in all the ledger entries. It will also allow me to add up rows so I can get a sum value. I know all my rows. Analyze is available on anything that is a list. All right, so that's really important on that piece. The next one is under the user setup is this sales invoice or purchase invoice posting policy. So if I come into this one, I'm gonna edit my list here. I have to allow, prohibit, or mandatory. So prohibit means I am not allowed to invoice, but I can ship or receive depending on which one of these I do. Mandatory is the function has to take place together, the ship and invoice or the receive and invoice. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to prohibited and I'm gonna come back out of here. If I go over to sales invoices, and I'm just gonna pick one. And if I attempt to post it, the system's gonna bring up, oops, let me just pick one here. I apologize for that. Let me go to the bottom. And if I select post, doesn't allow me to, I don't know why it's not acting like it should. Let me see here if this one does. Quantity of one. Oh, I apologize. I'm not on a sales order. I'm on a sales invoice. Let me go to the sales order. And it's not allowing me to invoice on that one because I do have a policy where I'm not allowed to do the invoicing. I'm only allowed to do the receipt or the shipping. So I have ones to ship and I'm gonna post. And you'll see where it says, do you want to post the shipment? I do not get the option to do the invoicing any longer. And that's also why I could not post a sales invoice. So we just found something out that we didn't know even existed. I'm going to come back over here to user setup again. I'm going to edit and I'm going to show you that I have the mandatory now. So if I come back over, go into my sales orders. And we'll just bring this one up. And when I do a posting, it's going to ask me, do I want to post shipment and invoice? So I no longer get the break between the two. So I think that's an important part to realize. That's, that's a super great new feature that should have been done a long time ago, probably. All right. So we kind of talked about the drag and drop. Um, just the last, another one here really quickly is the intercompany setup is that you have a little bit better intercompany. It's all done kind of in one screen. It tells you if there's any problem with the configuration. If I go in and do the chart of accounts or the intercompany dimension, once again, it's all in one spot. So it makes it very nice to see everything from one place and it has some synchronizations that can be set up, but now you're seeing the two chart of accounts, your intercompany one and the GL chart of accounts, and it helps you with the mapping. So that's a great feature if you do a lot of intercompany setup that you have that ability to do that. And then the other one, um, another one that we recently talked about is the ability to do keystrokes. So if I go into the customer list here, I hit my Alt key, that it highlights all the letters underneath there. So if I do C for customer, L for ledger entries, it's just gonna take me in there and it just allows people to be able to look up information. Not everybody is a mouser or really does like to build a keyboard. So they're gonna be able to see that information. The next one I kind of wanted to show you is related. Um, I'm just going to a different company here. I have a Kronos USA company that is also associated with my Kronos Arizona company. So if I come into my Kronos USA company, the next one is just master data synchronization. So I'm gonna do a new vendor. I'm gonna select new. I have a template set up for the vendor. Then we'll come down here. We'll just do Velocio. And I, maybe I'll add an address. and everything else should be set up, my posting groups and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out. So that was V60. Um, 
Now, if I come over here to my Arizona and I'm going to select on my vendors, and there it is down here, my vendor. If I open it up, I should see my Main Street address. So, master data synchronization, vendors, GL accounts, customers, most any of them in the system. So, the last one I wanted to talk about for options is just related to statistical accounts that you can have as many of these as you want. You can post a journal entry to them. So you're tracking the values in the system, maybe by dimension. And these can be used in a calculation for uh, the financial statement. So I can get a cost per employee if I wanted to. So these are available. It makes it really nice as a row that is available for you to do the reporting off of. And then the last area that I wanted to talk about and this is just back to my slideshow or the um, PowerPoint is Extension Marketplace. So Extension Marketplace is the ability to search for a product that you might want to add to your company that could make a difference on how you're, how you're processing data or a new feature that you might want to do. So it's important when you're looking on the marketplace that you do actually go back out and research the company associated to that add-on that is really important to know. Also read the reviews. Um, just as with typical with any restaurant or something like that, you're gonna look at, you wanna review. Install and test only in the sandbox environment. You never wanna put it into your production environment. That would could cause potential conflicts. I would strongly suggest you contact your CAM, your client account manager at Velocio. We have ones that we have as a preferred client um, or preferred vendor that might give you the best options or we'll know based on your company, is that going to be the best one for you? There's also realize there's additional costs for doing it, all right? So if I come back into my product here and I go to Extension Marketplace, so these are just some of the examples of ones that you, you know, clients are always asking about AP automation. So you can come in here and type in AP automation and it's going to come up and bring you some of the options related to doing that. And they're, like I stated earlier, they're preferred vendors that we work with on a regular basis that I would strongly suggest you talk to us about the different options with that. All right. Um, you can also, you know, if you were doing, let's say you decided to expand your business and go into rentals. So there's rental options. All right, many of those are out there, you know, Car Rental Express. I mean, but you also have to be careful when you're reading these. Some of these are only related to a particular country. All right, um, there's options for a unit of measure. Um, you know, there's just different ones out there. And like I said, you do want to go, hey, that is very interesting that I can have different units of measure. But then you'll see right down here, it says one for Italy. So you wanna be aware and just you know it's one of those options you can go look through the catalog and see what's there but once again strongly suggest you contact your cam validate if we've worked with them before do we have another suggestion for that and maybe not always have to um, just take a chance on it that you want to definitely contact us all right, so that is the end of the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, my name is Diana Harvey. My email and phone number are on the screen if you have any questions. Thank you for attending today.